Uh, welcome everyone to this virtual event by Health Tech Hub Copenhagen in collaboration with the Trade Council. Thank you all for joining us today. I can see that there are still some people joining. That's all right. Um, the topic is expanding abroad, how Denmark's embassies and the Trade Council can provide health tech startups with local market insights and advisory support to scale internationally. But before we get started with the agenda, I'll go over some practicalities. First of all, um, this event is being recorded, as I mentioned before. And for this and other reasons, we ask you to please have your microphone and camera switched off during this session. If you have any questions, feel welcome to ask them in the chat as we go along. There will be Q&A sessions along the way, as well as at the end. If you have any questions to a specific speaker, please mention their name or organization in your question so we know where to direct them. Um, today's agenda, uh, first we'll hear from Health Tech Hub Copenhagen and the Trade Council about our new partnership and what that means for health tech startups and how the Ministry of Foreign Affairs can help you expand abroad. We've also invited two case representatives, Oliver Benting from Viciana and Fasad Saber from o uh, Automatic, who will tell you about their journey in expanding abroad. At the end, as I mentioned, we will have a Q&A session and we expect to end at 3.30 p.m. But first, here's an introduction to Health Tech Hub Copenhagen by Valentin Bishan. Over to you, Valentin. All right, thank you. Thank you, Denise. And welcome, welcome everybody. Uh, I believe that uh, most of uh, of you in the in the audience that uh, that we're we're happy to have today know the Healthy Cup Copenhagen. So I'm going to go very briefly to who we are and what we're doing and what why do we exist. First, why are we here? Uh, why I'm here is uh, because I'm one of the founders of Healthy Cup Copenhagen. My name is Valentin Bejan. And our purpose for being is to accelerate the adoption of clever health tech solutions. Um, this is fitting into the bigger purpose of supporting uh, the good men and women that, uh, that we have in our hub to improve the health and well-being of 1 billion people and reach the people uh, have their solutions reach the people that they're meant to they're meant to serve. I won't go uh, in depth into everything that we do because that takes a lot and we are our own biggest fans and we like to talk uh, about uh, about what we're doing. Um, at the center of this is the fact that we are trying to be the wave that lifts all boats and we address this by uh, uh, by working on several angles uh, in the system. We're a nonprofit um, supported by these amazing partners that we thank uh, very much. However, today we are not uh, we're not here to talk uh, to talk about these partners, but about our latest partner, which is the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Trade Councils. And we'd like to start with uh, the reason why we're doing this. And that is because you are all working to bring um, novel solutions into the largest and most complex system in the world, which is healthcare. And we know from experience that even the most well-funded and well-functioning health tech companies out there still need um, every piece of good help they can get. And in this context, our goal is that the support for you is concentrated and not fragmented. And this partnership fits perfectly into that. Uh, that aside, these uh, mm, are also very fun people to work with, but this was uh, a later realization for us as well, and definitely a perk. Now, the second, the second question that uh, nobody asks, but I would like to address anyway, is that why do you need to go international? Uh, well, health is people and most people are not here. And 
what we we advise uh, all of you that we we work with is that you need to take your solutions out there prove their value and contribute to the world this is the only way to both grow your business and have maximum impact which we hope is one of the at least one of the reasons why uh, why you are in uh, in health and while you're looking at the world i would also like to encourage you to look beyond the usual suspects um, and really think what does your so where does your solution really have the most value um, and it's the answer is not always the us or germany or uh, uh, or the uk um, there are a few companies to get uh, to get inspired from uh, from here and one of them is uh, is an american company called zipline who became a billion dollar company by delivering on demand medical supplies not in the UK or Germany, but in uh, in Rwanda and in India and in the Philippines. So very much encouraging you to 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 use our capabilities and the capabilities of the Trade Council to explore thoroughly the right place that you should be in. And the last uh, and the last point: Why is it that should you should use this? And the answer is to me pretty obvious and that is because you can and what i mean by that is that the level of support that you can get through this governmental network should not be taken for granted um, i'm not danish i've known intimately quite a few countries around the around the world and i can tell you that there are only a handful of countries that offer this level of support and we're very very lucky to be in uh, in one of them basically you have um, you have capable people in pretty much pretty much every corner of the world doing this work and then supporting you either for free or for a fraction of what it would cost you to have the same services on the open market. And that not not leveraging this uh, can be can be a missed, it can be a pretty big missed opportunity. With that said, Happy to pass, uh, be quiet now, and to pass the stage to Christian and the colleagues from the UM. Thank you very much, um, Valentin. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Christian Staffeld, and I'm working for the Trade Council um, in Copenhagen in the capacity of team leader for our tech uh, sector advisory team. I'm uh, co-coordinating uh, our health tech efforts together with uh, the colleagues that you'll meet shortly when we'll uh, give you an introduction to the Trade Council uh, and uh, what we do and uh, how we can help your business. But first of all, um, we at the Trade Council are very happy for the partnership with Health Tech Cup Home Hagen and thereby the Danish health tech uh, ecosystem and uh, many of you present here today. This uh, partnership agreement is a formalized commitment from both parties uh, with the intent to cooperate with the aim to strengthen the ties between the Danish health tech ecosystem and the trade council around the globe. And here uh, initiate uh, specific activities and projects to accommodate the go-to-market process for you and uh, to promote Danish health tech uh, solutions abroad. As a partner for the Trade Council, Health Tech Hub Copenhagen and its network will be getting first-hand information about challenges, opportunities and government public affairs in a number of markets and be part of an internationalization forum on a governmental level. Um, Health Tech Hub Copenhagen and relevant companies will also be able to engage with the Trade Council in specific uh, development projects. But um, Let's uh, jump into the presentation of uh, who we are and uh, what we do. I'll just take over the control. About us, um, the Trade Council is uh, represented in, uh, yeah, in, in uh, more than 100 uh, countries' representations. And we have specific uh, health and uh, health tech advisors in uh, more than uh, 38 uh, countries or cities. Um, on an overall level, uh, the Trade Council is an integrated part of the Danish Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, and we have, uh, in the Trade Council, we have uh, more than 250 advisors in uh, these uh, 60 markets and uh, 100 plus cities. Um, 
we are having a very uh, specific sector focus. Uh, I'll show you in a minute. And uh, we are providing uh, in-depth knowledge uh, within uh, the Danish strongholds. We can be a door opener uh, to no, uh, local network and contacts, and we can uh, assist in uh, tailor-made uh, counseling for you and your businesses uh, to access uh, high-level decision makers, both in public and uh, private uh, organizations. And uh, also we are retrieving uh, through our colleagues in the Innovation Center Denmark, uh, cutting its uh, technology and, and knowledge about this. So um, in short, um, the Trade Council uh, is your access uh, to new markets faster. Um, as I said, we have uh, some pretty tight uh, sector focus. Um, we are divided into uh, eight, uh, eight uh, all the sectors. Um, and today um, we are represented by our, by our health advisor team and our tech advisor team, where we have a you know cross sector health tech uh, uh, group of uh, advisors around the globe. Peter, will you take over? I will be extremely happy to take over. Uh, I'll just get my camera on here. Huh? So my name is Peter, and I'm also extremely happy to be here. Uh, that seems to be the theme of today. Um, just two words on who I am. I come from the private sector, used to work with, uh, within metal industry, so quite different, but also was taking part in three different IT startups and uh, one startup within knowledge and training. So uh, I've been in, uh, in a smaller company and know that uh, a lot of... Uh, issues is uh, arising from not knowing where to go next and not knowing who to trust and work with. So what we do basically is that we have the local employees on the markets, as you were saying earlier, they are already in the local network and they have helped other companies just like you who, uh, who have seen what works and have also seen what does not work. So basically our task is, is increasing Danish exports by helping you to find the spot on the fence to jump over it where it's lowest to get into the new markets and to get into the internationalization quicker and easier. Um, what we do to achieve this network on the market is, is quite simple, not simple at all basically, is that we have as a Danish government, we have a lot of partnerships. Here we have with C40, which is within the, uh, the, the urban areas. We have the UN Global Compact, with this, with which, is, which is within the SDGs, and so on and so on. These are sort of things we can hang our different approaches to the local uh, municipalities, to the ministries, and to the highest level of authorities in the different countries where we are posted. So we know the local demand and the opportunities, but also the challenges, because what, what is needed in terms of regulatory issues, what is needed in terms of intellectual property rights. I've seen that, that there has been some questions about that already. Um, but we know that by each country, we know what, other have, what others have done. We know which companies to work with in terms of actually getting it done in the right way. So we have the uh, multilateral agreements, but we also have different instruments. We have uh, advisors sitting at the growth houses around Denmark. They're now called the business hubs who knows exactly how to help companies, not only within our work, but also within the environment of growing a company in Denmark. Helen, who uh, is your main contact, is one of them. And uh, she will be the access point for you guys uh, in uh, through the Health Tech Hub Copenhagen, where she will even be present if you would like to have a meeting with her. So she is the one who can help you. And this is one of the benefits you get out of working together with Health Tech Hub Copenhagen in this case, is that you get a dedicated person to, to, to start the dialogue. Then we have all our Danish strongholds, which is within all of our different areas within life science. It's within energy efficiency, water management, and so on. This is what we're talking into. And then we have all our local Danish stakeholders, which would be in your case, the uh, the Ministry of Health, for example, and so on, so that we can bring them 
to the table when we have a discussion with foreign partners. For example, we are now right now working on trying to get different uh, corona related products into uh, other countries to try and help the uh, the the local um, governments get the vaccines out quicker and and faster. And here we can have the uh, Danish health ministry sit on the table, say, yes, this is what we're using. This is what we're doing. This is how we see the future. So let's get on to the next slide. If I can do that. So as I said, I have 35 people around the world. I'm happy to see that both our people from UK is here, but also uh, uh, from Russia, Svetlana is here, who uh, I have been working with for seven years. I was uh, posted in Moscow, so uh, I have had the pleasure to do a lot of work with her already. Last year, I did a uh, just a very brief, simple questionnaire around and trying to focus on what countries are looking into what, what regions want to do what within where. And as you can see, digitalization and AI is extremely important in many areas. And also, we have the uh, sustainable and the smart hospitals, which is also where a lot of your companies is working into. And of course, there's also all the chronic uh, diseases that is both in elder care and uh, biotech and life science. So whenever you have a question about some of this and it would be relevant for you, talk more uh, with Helen and she will set up the right contacts for you guys. So I'm from Jutland. I don't know if you know that part of Denmark, but it's, uh, it's the, the place where everybody is asking, so how much does it cost? What, what does this really cost us? And the answer is, is it right now, normally it would cost about a thousand kronos. Now it's Corona times. So it costs 500 kronos per hour. But now, as most of you guys are SMVs, uh, you even get a discount of 50% on that. So every hour you work with us is only 250 Danish kronos. Now, we are not like lawyers. It's not when the ding, you call us and then we start charging. No, we write an agreement with you based on how much you want to do, what you want to achieve. We give you an hourly uh, idea about how much it will cost. And once that agreement has been signed, then we start charging. So that means all the discussions you will have with Helen, with me, with Christian, or whoever you might find that would be relevant for you to have a discussion with is for free. So you can actually get a chance to, to taste a lot of the knowledge that we already know and that we have here in Denmark about what is going on in the world. But as soon as you want to be even more specific, we can also do a free export sparring, as it's called, which is a 15 hours deeper dive into a market where you can have a chance to look into something that is really related to you and to the product that you have, because we cannot guarantee that we already have this information. Um, so you can have all the basics that you need to make a strategic decision, basically. We also have scope your business model, which is a new process that we are now starting out. And you will hear more about that in the uh, case studies. But the basic idea is that many Danish companies have an idea about what they want to achieve and how they do it. So using the Canvas uh, business model Canvas, we can track what you want to do, and then we can send it uh, to the country that you want to go into. There they will sit and say, okay, look, this doesn't work in this country. We might need to adjust this. We need to have this according to the regulations here and these sort of things. Uh, and then you will have a workshop together with the, the local country as well. What this brings you is that it brings your business a lot closer to maturity in that specific market. And based on that, it's a lot clearer for you what the local employee in that market can do for you because you've met them virtually, but you will be able to understand, okay, this person really understands what we're doing. They know where we're coming from. They have the background within tech and they also have the people within health. This gives you a, a bigger um, trust in us and understanding of what we can do. But it also gives us the benefit that we know your business better and we can go deeper into what you want to do and, and actually really initiate a process that will work for you. 
this is a, a model that is also for free for you. This is uh, actually 25 hours in, in our world, but it means that you will have an opportunity to go into uh, to really being prepared for our market. So what does all this mean for you? Now we've been talking a little bit about our different boxes and these sort of things. Our main goal is to help you internationalize. This is not something that is just because we are, we are nice. It's not something that is just because we charge these 250 Danish kroners. This is because this is a government strategy. We want to take you out there and make sure that you become a success. And there are limitations to what we can do. We need to have proven products. We need to have a, you know, it's a good idea if it's something that is already in use in Denmark. There needs to be pilot projects in different uh, countries and these sort of things. But this is also something we can help you with. So the, uh, the, the most important thing for you to take away from this meeting is that Helen Schierbeck, we, all the information is in the, the contact information, is at the very last end of this presentation. She is your main point of entry and you will uh, get to her through uh, Health Tech Hub Copenhagen. She will be the one who can uh, help you identify what you want and how you can get it. If you are in doubt, if you have some questions about anything, just simply call. One of the reasons why we have joined up with Health Tech Hub Copenhagen is that we are a little bit dusty diplomats. Okay, now today I'm in a, in a in a lumberjack shirt, but we are a little bit viewed as some dusty uh, diplomats that don't know what is going on. But actually the truth is that a lot of us are from the business side of, uh, of things and we really know what is, uh, what is going on in the different markets. The, of course, the ones who knows the deepest are the people who are sitting in a market. So if you just want to go straight ahead, please don't worry, you can go straight and call a, an embassy. They don't bite. They are very helpful. And if they already know what is going on, they will be very happy to help you. That is no question about that. Um, so now we will deep dive into something a little bit different that we also do because our side of, of business is the export part, but we also have a, a part that is working with innovation and helping you in that area. So I hope if you have any questions or any uh, any ideas, please write uh, in the chat and we will address your questions and your ideas later in the presentation. Over to you, Camilla. Thank you so much, Peter. So my name is Camilla Bartoldi and I am the team manager of the Innovation Center of Denmark. Uh, what I would like to explain about the Innovation Center of Denmark is that we work within the framework of the Triple Helix Innovation Model, which means that we are uh, focusing on how government bodies, academia and industry collaborate in within uh, a political areas such as health tech. And we want to um, elevate the Danish Triple Helix Model into a global contact context um, which we do uh, around eight global hotspots. So we have uh, an innovation center in Seoul, Shanghai, in Bangalore, in Tel Aviv, in Munich, in Boston, in Silicon Valley, and in Sao Paulo. Um, the idea of the centers is to support you with access to these global innovation hotspots. It's also to support you in how to knowledge retrieve through partnerships um, from these uh, areas. Uh, we can also support you with access to communities through incubation acceleration programs with leading local partners and corporate accelerator programs. And uh, lastly, also how you can attract talents to you, to the Danish ecosystem. So that's the objective and the goal in order to support you um, getting uh, access to the right people who are working within the same area as you. Um, yeah, in order you, for you to be part of, of uh, the elite and the talents. Yep. 
that was it from me. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, post them in the chat. Um, Helen will also be the person who you contact if you want to learn more about the Innovation Center Denmark. Yeah. And it's back to Peter. Yes, and it's me again. So basically, what is most important is here. This is the slide for the information and for the contacts of all of us. Helen Schierbeck is the, the right person to go to if uh, you have any questions. So if you have any ideas, any wishes, you can go ahead. And we are back to the to the moderator. Denise? Oh, I think we have a question. Yes, we have a raised hand. Karishma, do you want to um, to unmute and ask the question? Yeah, so uh, as I understand about the hotspot and the data uh, of extracting the data from the hotspot, so what kind of data are uh, you talking about of extracting here? Is it a business or it's a real health healthcare data? Are you posing this question to Innovation Center of Denmark? Sorry? Are you, is it? Yes, that's, this uh, that's for Camilla. Correct. Is it? Yeah. So within. Yeah. In, is it, the question is for uh, the previous speaker who talked about uh, uh, the hotspot centers and getting the data from the hotspot centers. So um, the collaboration with the innovation center, it is not only data attraction or um, you like at the, for example, the innovation center is a mix between getting access to the right partners and ecosystems within, for example, Bangalore in India. Um, yeah. So it's a, it's it's helping you finding the right partners in those local areas where you know or would like to be uh, integrated into the ecosystem or where you know there are talents you would like to uh, attract to your company here in Denmark. So the Innovation Center will help you find those partners within the, your specific um, area of business. <coughs> Did that make sense? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. We also have a question from LinkedIn. Um, is there a size limitation? Can a company be too small to get help? Let me answer that. Um, a company can never be too small to get help. It's just a question of whether the company is ready or not, basically. So there are, of course, certain things that need to be in place to be able to internationalize. But it is one of the situations where the uh, the benefits of working together with uh, the the growth houses and the business hubs in Denmark is very valuable. Because there, it is not only the internationalization uh, that we can help with, but also the access to all the services that they have. If it's in terms of ensuring your uh, intellectual property rights, if it's ensuring that you have the right setup in terms of stock, if it's relevant for your company, and so on and so on. So, no, there, there's never anybody that is too small. So, uh, so go ahead and contact us. And then we will advise you, maybe uh, we will not advise you to go to China as the first market. If this is the first market that you will uh, try and internationalize, internationalize to, but then we might find the, uh, a better fit of market because we do know the markets around the world rather well. And uh, I would like to add from the Innovation Center of Denmark, we do collaborate with um, local partners who, do, who does incubation programs and acceleration programs, uh, as well as with corporate accelerator programs. And we do get a request from these local partners and corporate accelerator programs on where to find and scout for talents, also in Denmark. Uh, this means that uh, in this collaboration with um, Health Tech Copenhagen, 
we would be able to let you know what kind of uh, ev events within or accelerated programs within your uh, area that could be interested for you to join even as an early stage startup. Um, so it's just to let you know that uh, at the Innovation Center Denmark, we look at ourselves as the one who are sort of predefining where is the future heading and, and collaborating with those partners who are more in the search of uh, early stage startups and talents than already finished business who are ready for export. Thank you. If um, if there's no more questions, I think we will move on. Thank you for those insights. Uh, it's so great that organizations can have that much access to knowledge and assistance around the globe. I, I think that's great. Next up, we'll hear from uh, one of those organizations. Welcome, Oliver Benting from Vienna. Well, thank you very much. Can you hear me, loud and clear? Loud and clear. <laughs> yep. Yep. Good. So my name is Oliver Benting, and I'm the sales director of the Danish company called Vienna. First of all, I would like to thank the health tech hub in Copenhagen and also the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for inviting Vienna to this web meeting, giving us the opportunity to share some basic information about what we do and also share our experience working with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and also the Danish Trade Council in Germany. So the last 12 months has been very challenging for, for many companies all over the world. And I have never experienced a situation like this uh, in my 30 career of selling medical devices and medical products. And this is why I called the start of the presentation this bone expert and the teamwork with UM and TC in a challenging time. So, as I mentioned before, Viciana is a Danish company. One of the questions that we just had before was, how small can a company be? Well, I can state here, Viciana is a small company. We have a total of eight employees. The company was founded in 2004. And the basic product we sell today is Bone Expert, and Bone Expert was introduced to the Danish market in 2009. Bonexpert is a piece of software that automatically identifies the bones in a hand x-ray and calculates the bone age and delivers this result to radiologists and pediatric doctors. Visiana is owned by Hans Hendrik Totba. He's the CEO of the company and still active in the company today. Our first version of the software, as I mentioned before, was introduced in 2009. Today, we have three different versions of our software. We have BoneXpert standalone, mainly used for research. Then we have BoneXpert server, which is a version for hospitals and larger clinics with a so-called PAC system, a image archive system. And in November last year, we launched BoneXpert online, which gives small clinics small doctors around the world the opportunity to upload images to our website, get the image analyzed, and get the bone age result. So how does it work? Well, the, the software it's, itself is very simple. You have an image. You send the image to the Bone Expert software, and 10, 15 seconds later, an annotated image come back into your, come back into your pack system with detailed information about the bone age. Here I have shown you the image that we get out. And if you look at the hand x-ray on, on the right side, you will clearly see that we have identified 21 bones in the hand x-ray. We have identified the bone border of every single bone. And based on that information, we can calculate the bone age of every single bone. And then we present the bone age according to two medical standards, which is Riley Pile bone age or the Tanner Whitehouse method. We do not 
why is this happening? I apologize. Hmm. I lost control. Try, try again. Um, so right now I have a button that says stop presenting and I cannot swap between the two images. Okay, um, I'll just, uh, I'll take it back control and I'll do it for you. Okay. Yep, so we identify the, the bone borders and we analyze the image and we give the result of the bone age. So how do we do this? Well, bone, bone, bone expert software is based on AI technology. We use AI technology to identify the bone borders. The AI technology has actually been trained on 30,000 images to get this information. And when we have the bone age, you can, I'm stopping because the presentation is jumping back and forth and confusing me. Could you go one step back, please? Okay, good. <laughs> so with the bone age, the doctor can compare the bone age results with the child's chronological age and then tell, tell if the child is advanced or delay in the skeleton growth. This means that the doctor can see, are the child developing correctly according to their age? Would it be possible to treat the child if they are delayed with, for example, growth hormones or not? And then during the treatment of growth hormones, we can validate that the child is growing as expected. Next slide, please. So the, the setup we have done when we started the first version of our software was the version of software that was used for research mainly. Basically, the doctors had the images uh, on a hard drive, imported it to Bone Expert, and analyzed the image. Quite fast, we realized that if we wanted to jump into the clinical market, we need to have access to the so-called PAC systems that they have at hospitals. PAC system is a image archive system where the images basically stay. It is nearly impossible to get the images outside of the PACS environment. So we turned Bone Expert into what we call a DICOM node that works in the PACS environment. So today in a clinical setup, you will obtain the hand X-ray through the X-ray machine. The X-ray is sent to the PAC system. And from the PAC system, you can automatically decide do you want this image analyzed for the bone age or not, or you can send it manually. The image is, this, is then sent to the bone expert server, analyzed, and goes back into the PAC system. In the PAC system, the radiologist will now have two images, the original image of the hand X-ray, and then the annotated image with the bone expert, bone age calculations. This analysis will only take 10 to 15 seconds. Could you jump on to the next slide, please? So what we give the radiologist are a basically an autonomous system that will work fully automatically. The system is very accurate based on the AI algorithm that has been trained on 30,000 images. And we come up with a average score that is comparable to six manual readers from the clinic. And the mean absolute deviation is 4.1 months. Also, another thing that we do compared to our competitors, we show and we explain how did we reach the result, and you can see that on the hand x-ray. Next slide, please. So how do we do our business? Well, we deal directly with our customers. We do not have any middlemen involved in our business. Our business is built up as a subscription model. The customer buys a one-year license with a certain amount of images that they prepay. 
when they have done that, they get free access to the software, they get free updates, and they get free online support. So it's a quite basic, simple business model, but it works for us. Next slide, please. So today we have more than 200 customers spread around the world. We have, of course, a strong presence in Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. Also in the UK, Netherlands, and Belgium. We could do a bit better in the German market. And then you will see we are spread out into the US, South America, India, Australia, and Japan. One unique thing with our software is that we have a license server. So every single customer is connected to a license server. We do not transform the image through the license server. We only use the license server for checking up, do the customer have a credit to analyze the image or not. This gives us a very important information. We know exactly every day how many images has been analyzed and where have they been analyzed. So this model, business model was good, still is good, but then the situation changed. Next slide, please. Back in March 2020, as you know, COVID-19 hit all over the world and it hit our business. And we could immediately see the effect on our license server. Here on the right-hand side, you will see a accumulated count of uh, images analyzed in Denmark, Sweden, UK, and Italy. And in average, we were close to 1,500 images per month in this area. And from March month, we had a dramatic drop in the amount of images that were analyzed. Also at the same time, it became impossible for us to travel. It became impossible for us to join congresses. And this meant that we were hacking, having a lack of leads coming in. We could not grow our business as we expected. Next slide, please. So to improve our situation, we had luckily the launch of the Bone Expert online. So that the first purpose of this product was to give small doctors, small hospitals access to the service online. But very quickly, we realized that we could use it as a lead generator. So if you jump into our website, you can see that you can get the possibility of getting a free trial of using Bone Expert online. And this slowly started to generate more and more leads for us. And actually here in February, we had 22 new trial set up on the Bone Expert online. And this created for us three new customers, one in Mexico, one in India, and one in Turkey. But this is not enough to keep our business up and running. So in November month, we reached out to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Foreign Affairs and ask, could we get help in looking at different markets to improve our business? And we were hooked up with the German, uh, with the Trade Council in Germany, the Danish Trade Council in Germany, and were signed up for free meetings, free of charge. The first meeting was a basically an introduction meeting where we presented it what do we do? How do we do our business? The second meeting, we sat down with the members of the Trade Council in Germany and basically developed our business model canvas. And the third meeting, the Trade Council presented the scope of our business and what could we do to improve our business in Germany. Next slide, please. The final output was a detailed information about especially the German healthcare system. We found out exactly how many hospitals have the combination of having a radiology department and a children care department. And we also got potential 
uh, information on how could we improve our business. Normally, the Trade Council will recommend you to sign up with a partner. This is not the way we do our business. We do business directly with the hospitals, uh, but they helped us develop a new approach to German hospitals. And actually we have taken this approach and are now using the same method and same idea on the UK market to expand our business today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this was basically it for the day from my side. Thank you, Oliver. Um, I have a question. Yes. What is, what is the um, what has been the biggest unforeseen challenge in um, in expanding abroad? I think that the, the, the biggest challenge uh, that we were also going to look into is, for example, market like uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, jumping into this market seems for us nearly to be impossible without signing up with a partner. And to do that, we have to change our business model and set up a new structure for, for doing that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and did you overcome it? Uh, we, we just started the process. We had the first meeting with uh, the Trade Council in uh, Saudi Arabia. And we are looking forward to, to the second meeting where we will work on our business model canvas. Okay, well, uh, uh, good luck. And there are some other challenges that we have to have a uh, medical uh, device uh, how do you say that in English? Um, approval for yeah. getting in Saudi Arabia. At the same time, parallel, we are working on the FDA approval, uh, which we will hope to have ready here uh, in the middle of the summer of 2021. And this seems that it could speed up our process time in getting into Saudi Arabia when we have the FDA approval. Well, good luck on that journey. And thank, and you. thank you so much, Oliver. Okay. Uh, Next up, we have uh, Fasad Saber from Automatic. Welcome. Thank you. Well, I take over the presentation. I hope you can hear me. Yep. Great. And thank you to Oliver for the presentation. And thank you for inviting me from the Hiltech Hub Copenhagen and the Trade Council. So I've been really looking forward to the presentation today and sharing our experiences regarding um, moving in internationalizing and uh, exporting to other countries. So my name is Farzad Saber and I am one of the founders of the company. And today I am mostly focusing on our business development activities. So before I start my, pres my presentation, I would uh, like to take you back to our journey, uh, tell a, a little bit about our company. Um, let's see. And I will try to dive deeper in some of the area that uh, normally I don't do, but it is relevant here to focusing on some of the challenges we have had and how uh, we have been asking and working with the Trade Council in order to uh, manage those challenges. Uh, you know, we started actually looking at the new way of treating uh, respiratory patients already in 2010. And I come back to the idea behind our technology. Uh, oxygen therapy is something that, you know, that been done uh, based on very traditions for more than 100 years. So um, there are a lot of traditions. We always have done it this way. We don't want to change it. Very typical traditional within the healthcare. The first five or six years, we spend a lot of time on um, developing prototypes, talking to hospitals, and, and to see whether we could change the way we are treating patients. Uh, this collaboration, but it's actually you're doing it close uh, work cooperation with a number of hospitals in region capital in Copenhagen. And as you know, healthcare uh, needed a lot of money if you want to see mark approved products. Uh, so we were trying to raise uh, grants and to find out how we could finance uh, developing, approving a medical device. And you know, in the beginning, we sent a lot of applications and you know, the answer was, why do we need this kind of technology? We have good nurses, we have good doctors, and uh, why should we change it? So in 2016, uh, we sent an application to Innovation Fund Denmark and they gave us the grant in order to move from having prototypes to have a CE mark product. Um, so in 2019, 
in February, our product was CE marked. So now we had a product we could we could start selling. And in the beginning, in 2019, I think we started up in five or six, seven uh, countries. Um, and then the COVID came. And actually, uh, in the beginning, we tried to say this technology could also be used to treat uh, COVID patients. Um, but even in Denmark, they said that they are not going to introduce a new technology while they have a lot of patients. So it should wait. Uh, but um, something happened in March last year, actually, or about one year ago, that the number of COVID patients increased rapidly and they didn't have the capacity to treat those patients at COVID departments. So they start moving some of the patients out to some lung departments that they have our technology, already had our technology. And they start using uh, that technology for treating COVID patients. And I remember the first patient was treated, it was a Saturday. And Monday morning we were called by Legion Hostel and asked how many devices do we have and they asked in less than one week, we should deliver it to all the hospitals in region capital and then cap region uh, Zealand. It actually opened some door for us to other countries because then and they were writing about our technology in many countries. I mean, from Japan to South America, there were articles about the, the new technology that could be used to treat COVID patients. Uh, so, let me uh, explain what we do and then I will uh, go back to the countries. Um, our technology is actually based on, you know, you have a flow meter at many hospitals. They and also COVID patients need a lot of oxygen, as you know. Um, but normally uh, the nurses visit patients uh, between two, three, four times per hour. Um, they measure something called SpO2. It shows how much oxygen you have in your blood. And then they adjust the oxygen flow manually. And then I think come back again and do it. And every time, especially now because of the COVID, they have to change the PPE and enter to the room, measure the saturation and uh, come back again. It's, it requires a lot of time, time consuming and also uh, very manually. And, and also we know from a number of studies showing that between the measurements, the saturation, the, was something called SpO2, can be changed rapidly. And it's very bad if saturation is very low or very high. It should be very, very exact. And by using our technology, we define a target for what the saturation should be and define a range for how much oxygen the patient may receive. And that's actually quite easy. You define those uh, information. Uh, we have some number of templates, depending on what kind of patients we have. Is it COPD? Is it uh, COVID? And then the system start uh, adjusting the oxygen so your uh, oxygen saturation SpO2 is very stable. So it means for a hospital that they don't need to visit patients so often. They don't need to change PPE in order to enter to the uh, room. And also we know uh, COVID uh, patients, they are very unstable. So SpO2 can change very, very rapidly. And we have also published some stu studies showing that uh, you need to have many adjustments if you want to have stable uh, COVID patients. So that's what our technology does, monitoring the patients all the time, um, continuously, and uh, adjusting the oxygen flow, depending how much oxygen you have in your blood. So when the COVID started, as I mentioned before, we were in uh, seven countries. As you can see at the map, uh, red flags showing the countries we are represented today, uh, and the purple flags show the countries where we are negotiating with the local partner. And we are actually, we have chosen to have local partners um, instead of selling directly to the hospitals. Uh, when we look at the um, European countries, as you know, you, you must have a CE mark product. Our product is classified as 2B. So uh, we cannot sell our technology without having it. But when we, uh, you know, move outside Europe, there are different regulations. We talk about FDA and Chinese, they have their own regulations. Uh, Russians, they have their own. So there are different re regulations and sometimes it takes between one and two years uh, to, to receive those approval. And since we are a small company, we don't have the resources uh, to spend one or two years in Russia or in China to approve uh, our, our product. And also it's quite very, very expensive. So 
we have chosen to have local partners because also we need to have first of all support and to deliver logistically deliver to those products. So it's very important to have somebody that we can trust that can represent us at the local uh, country. So now we have the challenges um, because the, the first question is uh, how can we trust the company we are working with? Um, are they going to copy our product? Uh, can we be sure that they are doing giving the best service? Uh, now we have the code. We cannot. Uh, sorry, we cannot travel. Uh, how can we be sure that we have chosen the right partner? Um, and that's where we have been uh, working with the, the trade council, uh, and in some countries asking if they could help us to, uh, uh, you know, to find some uh, companies that are working within the respiratory area and that can be trusted. Uh, I can mention countries like uh, South Korea, um, in India, uh, where we were uh, having quite close co cooperation in order to um, cover a number of companies and choosing one. And you know, since uh, COVID started for about one, one year ago, uh, we have signed agreement uh, and are presented in more than 25 new countries. Just since January, we have uh, started up in uh, in uh, five new countries, and now in the, within the next three or four weeks, we're going to start up four new countries. And it needs a lot of uh, you know information to be sure that we are doing the things at the same way, uh, and we have a concept for how 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 to do it. Um, so. One of the things, as I mentioned, it was you know entering the market, getting information, being introduced to a number of uh, um, companies, local companies. But we have also been working in the countries where we had a, a distributor already, uh, but they are facing the same challenges that we had in the beginning uh, when we started in Denmark. That the doctors said, "Well, it's okay, it's fine. We have this technology. Why, why should we use this new technology?" Because you know, automatic auction therapy is very, very new. Um, so one thing is to find a good uh, partner that can represent us in the country. But if they have some challenges to enter to the hospitals, to the healthcare sector, and, you know, convince them that this technology works, it also takes some time. And even though we are working with some both small and huge uh, distributors, uh, it, it can be a challenge in some countries. So um, the last case we had, it was actually in Germany, uh, and Peter uh, suggested that we could try to have a webinar uh, coordinated by the Trade Council and inviting a number of uh, key opinion leaders and hospitals in order to uh, talk about how this new technology uh, improved the way we are treating patients. And when we started uh, planning, we did expect that we'll have between 20 to 30, if we were very, very lucky, participants at the webinar. Uh, but when, since we get closer and closer to the deadline, there were more than 130 uh, participants at the webinar. So it was huge, and there are many doctors and insurance companies uh, participating at that webinar. Uh, so there are different ways of working at the Trade Council, both when we are uh, starting and uh, want to have introduction to a country, or uh, through in the countries where we have been working and you want to have more information and open more doors. And also I have another very interesting case uh, because we also had um, a meeting for some time ago in uh, Saudi Arabia uh, when the results were, well, you need to have a partner, you have to have FDA, FDA approval, it takes some time. And then we did decide that it's going to take too long and we are not sure that we have chosen the right partner. Uh, so we stopped it there. But actually, last week, uh, we were contacted by the Danish Trade Council in uh, Saudi Arabia, and they said that uh, there had been a meeting at the health ministry in Saudi Arabia, and they wanted to know more about our product. So we had a few days to prepare a meeting. It was actually last Thursday. Uh, so we had a meeting on morning, and Mary from the Trade Council uh, contacted me at 7 o'clock here, and I think it was 9, 9 o'clock evening in Saudi Arabia. And she said, can we have a meeting now? Um, it was right here uh, weekend. And just said, they are very interested and they want to proceed, uh, find a par partner in Saudi Arabia as soon as possible. So even though we had decided not to continue there, it was actually very nice that uh, when the um, 
occasion and the conditions were okay that the trade council remembered us and contacted us after some months and said now the time is uh, now is the right time um, to start a dialogue with the authorities in Saudi Arabia. So we have been very happy for having uh, that cooperation. I think it would be difficult for us as a small company to have access to those markets um, and they move so fast in some in so many countries if we didn't have the backup and the support from the Danish uh, Trade Council. So. Yeah, that was actually my uh, presentation. Uh, I don't know if there are any questions. We do have a question. Yeah, I can see there is a yeah, did yeah. the Trade Council give you knowledge and advice about which certification you need. Uh, yeah, thank you for that question. Um, yeah, I mean, that's actually one of the first thing we ask about regarding um, what does it need in order to start up in, in, in the country? Um, so, and that's also one of the reasons we looked at the US and decided not to start up in US. Um, so it's very important for us that we can use our CE mark and start uh, very quickly in the country. And it's also depending on finding the right partner. So it's a combination of the requirements, certifications to start up, and having the partner who is interested to do the investment. It's also very important for us that when we choose a partner, that they should cover the cost for starting up that country. Because we also have seen in some countries, it is a big advantage showing that they are working with European companies. So it means they try to make an agreement with us uh, with exclusivity, and then they use the agreement in their tender processes. That's showing that they are used, working with so many European countries, but they never buy anything. So there are also such a companies. Uh, so trusting and choosing the right one is very important. Um, so, yes, we uh, asked them about the certification too. Um, oh, there's some echo here, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll work through it. You also, you mentioned uh, trust with your local partners, but did you also experience um, lack of trust the other way around? Like, did it take time to build trust that uh, that you could deliver what you were, what you were promising as well? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, we have had some, but it didn't have anything to do with the Danish Trade Council. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are cases where you, when you spend a lot of time negotiating a contract, you find out that they're interested in something else. And um, so, and even especially now, when you cannot travel, you cannot visit them and look at each other face to face. Uh, so it makes it difficult. So you have to be very uh, aware of, are we choosing the right partner? And if it's not working, and you can stop the uh, cooperation. But also interesting is, is, you know, for about four years ago, I don't think we could have been able to make so many uh, agreements in less than one year. But because of the COVID situation, even in many countries in the East, they were expected to visit, but they also accepted that that's the way we are going to start our cooperation virtually. Uh, we have another question from Felix. Uh, from your perspective, what are key success factors for working together with the Trade Council? I think uh, you have to be very uh, important. You have your own st strategy. You know what you want. Um, if you are going to start a number of many countries, then you should have a clear strategy. Um, but otherwise, you can also, we haven't been used have you know our cooperation based on we have this concept how can we implement in other countries um, but i'm sure that the trade council will also help you if you want to find out how to start up in a new country but i could imagine that it will take some more time if you don't know what you want um, but uh, yeah i think definitely it's a good idea to have a clear idea what you want Good. Um, Peter has a question. He raised his hand. Yeah. Yeah, it was maybe just a comment as well, because this is this is where really where Helen is is used to working with with newer companies without set strategies, because it is a discussion and it is a talk about where are you in your process and and where, what is your product and what market would fit your product. Maybe some are easier than others. As Fassad said, and thank you very much for all the nice words, Fassad, mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. might not have been the easiest place to start because they don't have the uh, 
did the CE and so on. So, I mean, we take we try and take all these uh, conditions into uh, consideration and, and, and try and lift the company in where it's easiest. Mm -hmm. And we have another uh, question from Felix, and maybe it's not just uh, you, Fasad, but also Oliver, who can answer this. Um, from your perspective, what are what are key success factors for working together with the Trade Council? Or did we already have that? I'm sorry. Maybe Oliver, you want to answer that question then? Well, I think it's very important that uh, you prepare what answers. Uh, basically, you, you prepare your questions uh, to the Trade Council. What, what information do you want out of the market? Uh, do you have any specific area that you want to look into? And you have to prepare this. Uh, before the meeting and, and present these questions to the Trade Council. When you have presented the questions, uh, the, the Trade Council will come back with a proper and valuable answer for that. Good. We have a, we have a question from Valentin. Perhaps the same question can be answered by Oliver and the Trade Council colleagues. Yeah, so that was not a question, that was just a comment. Um, do we have more questions? I think if we don't have any more questions, um, maybe it's better to let people get on with their afternoon. Yeah, if there are any questions, you can just contact me afterwards, it'll be fine. We're looking forward to answering the questions. Well, thank you so much, Oliver and Fassad, for, for joining uh, us at the Health Tech Hub Copenhagen and uh, the Trade Council today. We're, we really appreciate it. And uh, for the Trade Council, we're really looking forward to this partnership and collaboration, both for um, for on a, on a more global scale, but also for, for our members. Thank you for today. Thank you for now. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody.